Today I brought you the Kimber Model 84. This rifle I'm assuming is pretty old because it's got a serial number under 1500. You're looking at a length of pull, 13 and 7 eighths inches. An overall length of 40 and a half, a weight over 7 pounds. The trigger break on this rifle is actually really nice. Very light trigger, breaks very crisp. The action, also very smooth. Now, how the bolt comes out is actually pretty cool. What you're gonna do is hit this button right here, just push it in, pull it out. Putting the bolt in, you don't even need to hit the button. That's pretty nice, because I struggle with a lot of different bolt actions with the bolt coming out. Now, this particular rifle is not free-floated, so if you go in a real dry climate or a real humid climate compared to where you sight the rifle in, you are probably going to be looking at a point of impact shift. It doesn't have a detachable magazine, it's just got a dropping floor plate. The overall finish on the stock is very high quality. Like this is butter smooth, they did an excellent job. Even where it's taken damage, it's very hard to notice. Now this does have a chip on the back butt plate. You can totally tell it was either a sling swivel here, or they, I don't know, probably hit the butt into like a bob wire fence, which kind of makes sense with this damage right there. But look at how well it takes it. It still looks good on the stock. The bluing looks amazing. This rifle was neglected, like bad. There was surface rust on almost the whole thing. After we cleaned it up, the bluing still looks great. If that gives you any kind of idea of how good of a job they did on the bluing. The polish on the action, like how smooth this is, is just amazing. Again, like I said, the trigger brake. There's like zero creep. So the question really comes, you know, if I had the money, would I buy a Kimber rifle? They're supposed to have a bedded glass action, supposed to guarantee sub MOA. To be honest, this is a niche rifle. It really is. This is the type of rifle I would take hunting if I knew I was going to make a bunch of Instagram posts. Like say I went hog hunting somewhere and there was a bunch of sponsors and I'm going to be driving this really nice car and I know they're going to take photos of me to put on Instagram, then yeah, this would be a doable rifle. The reason I say it's a niche rifle, it's special to people because it's expensive. It's not expensive because it's special, if that makes any sense. Like, it doesn't do anything that, like, your standard budget rifle cannot do. So if you're like, I want to buy this rifle because it's a Kimber and it's going to be super awesome and it's going to be super great, that, that's not the way it works. This rifle is just a rifle that they slapped a high price tag on it and a cool name. This particular rifle is chambered in 223, which is great for youth, but it's lacking a couple of things that you'd want on youth, like a removable magazine, which makes unloading it easier. Now the safety is pretty good on this. It completely hides the red dot. It's even got a little red dot on there, so when the bolts charge, you know, which a lot of bolt actions fail on. Like the safety, no matter where you flip it, you'll still be able to see the red dot, so it gets real confusing. But like if I was gonna buy, my daughter a rifle, and I wanted 223. Without a doubt, I would pick her an AR-15. It's lighter, it's a whole lot safer. Like I can lock the chamber open, I can remove the magazine to unload it. It actually says safe and fire. And I can make them just as accurate for like half the price of this Kimber rifle. But anyways, if you'd like to check out any of my other videos, click on these two boxes. And again, remember, this is special because it's expensive. It's not expensive because it's special.